Okay, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to FINO 2021. Um, so we have our second plenary session this morning and we can look forward to some very exciting talks as always at FINO, it's always a pleasure to be here. Um, and our first speaker is Tulika Bose from the University um, of Madison at Wisconsin in Wisconsin and she will talk about recent LHC results. Please Tulika, go ahead. Thank you, Dori. So yes, it's a pleasure to be here today to talk to you about uh, recent LHC results. So all of you are aware of the, the goals of particle physics, which range from you know, trying to understand the, uh, the exact nature of electroweak symmetry to what is responsible for dark matter or where is all the antimatter in the universe and, and what about gravity? We are trying to address these questions by using the standard model as a tool for discovery whereby we're doing precision measurements of standard model processes, trying to understand the backgrounds, looking for deviations and anomalies, also doing searches or measurements of rare standard model processes, where we can take advantage of the large LHC data sets and, and look for any kind of enhancement from BSM particles. At the same time, we are exploring new frontiers, sort of going beyond the standard model, via direct searches for BSM particles. In this case, we are really going in new directions with new models, challenging topologies in a way, as I would say, innovate. And then we're doing this while taking advantage of, of state-of-the-art analysis methods, data mining, machine learning, new technologies, and an upgraded detectors. All of this is achieved also, I think, by a good collaboration between theorists and experimentalists. And then Fino is a great example of that. And, and I'm using an analogy from one of my favorite TV series that you can have a theorist who sometimes comes up with an interesting idea. You know, this could be displaced vertices, paranormal activities. And, and then you need an experimentalist who comes and, and debunks that theory. And together, they look and hunt for the fact that the truth is out there, and that takes them to places where they do these searches. And that takes me to the LHC, which is where we are searching for the truth. And, and we are right now here in the middle of uh, long shutdown two, after having collected good amounts of data in, in, in run one and run two. And in run two in particular, we have about 139, 140 inverse femtobonds of data that was collected. Uh, run three starts uh, next year. We're again going to get a decent amount of data, and then we're going to go on to the high luminosity LHC uh, data taking period. So overall, I would say the LHC really has performed very well beyond its expectations in a way, and, and the experiments do. And because they've collected all of this data, sometimes under sort of trying or challenging conditions, for example, the kind of pileup we had during run two. But of course, keep in mind that 95% of the total LHC data is, is still to come and then be studied. If I had to choose a single slide to talk about, this would be it. And here you see uh, measurements uh, by CMS, but Atlas has a very similar plot at 7, 8, and 13 TV over about nine orders of magnitude. And, and of course, you can uh, see from here that the measurements seem to match up quite well with the, the theory uh, predictions. However, what I find interesting also about this plot is if you look at what's happening below this sort of region, this is one Pico Barnes. This is really the region where we expect new physics to exist. And now we are doing a whole bunch of measurements in this area. And so this is a really exciting time to be looking at all of these uh, processes. So I'll start by going over some of them and to starting in the electroweak sector, for example. Here, as I've mentioned, the large data sets really allow us to test the standard model in complementary ways. We are doing multi-differential, you know, cross-section measurements now. We have first-time sensitivity to rare multi-boson final states. This is an event display from CMS, the triboson production. And different production mechanisms, uh, VBS, uh, VBF, and, and this is a data over theory plot from ATLAS, which shows a large number of measurements that ATLAS has done over the different uh, running periods. Of course, the thing I want you to take away from here is that the uncertainties are still quite large. And then this is where you expect the data over theory to be one if everything was standard model-like. 
So what this is telling me is that there are still room for surprises. And, and so we need to be getting down to the point where these uncertainties are much smaller to be able to say something concretely. And for that, we're at this point also, interestingly enough, becoming sensitive to NLO corrections. These are becoming more and more important. Another area that has got a lot of interest is measurements of uh, quartic gauge couplings. I mean, they are known exactly in the standard model and they are sensitive to new physics. A particular example is the electroweak production of, of Z gamma plus two jets. Uh, this is a, a measurement that really uh, takes advantage of the, the signature of, of having these uh, uh, jets, which might be uh, produce a vector boson fusion like mode. And not only can we do fiducial and then differential cross sections, we can, for example, look at the, the Z gamma invariant mass plot, where if there were anomalous quartic gauge couplings, we would see an enhancement in this high mass region. And of course, in this case, we don't. And so we can go ahead and then set constraints on anomalous gauge couplings. So measurements like this, where you have an observed significance of more than five sigma for the production can really be now used for searching for new physics. We have another uh, such example. This is now a photon induced uh, WW production uh, from Atlas, which really helps us understand the gauge structure of the standard model. But then you can really do a precision measurement. In this case, for example, looking at the, the PT of the EMU system and in trying to understand how the data models the expected uh, predictions. And here again, Atlas has an observed significance of five sigma for this important process. Moving on to another sector, this is now the top sector. And, you know, it's been over 25 years since the top was discovered. And I think it's still one of the hottest topics. I mean, the LHC is really a top uh, quark factory, the way I see it. Uh, you can see here inclusive cross sections at different center of mass energies. They are well understood and they agree with the NNLO predictions. Most recently, for example, we've had uh, two measurements, one from ATLAS and one from CMS, looking at uh, TT bar cross-section measurements at uh, 5 TeV. And this was really one uh, week of data taking in, in 2017, as a special run that yielded these results where you can now have the, the measurement, which you see here, for example, in red, with the uncertainties compared with different uh, PDF sets to try and then constrain or understand which is a better fit. And, and here is a similar measurement from CMS, again, along with the, the different PDF sets. So I would say the top has really evolved. I mean, from a time when we were doing uh, TT bar at Tevatron and single top to here's an event display looking at uh, top quark production in heavy ions. And now we've gone on to be looking at four top quark production. So the most recent result in this case comes from Atlas. Uh, now four top is very interesting because it's a very rare process. It's about uh, 12 uh, femtobonds cross section. Interestingly enough, now it is also sensitive to the top you cover coupling and also BSM effects where the rate may be enhanced in, in several models. Uh, shown here is the, uh, the events in, in bins of, of, of signal over background, and you sort of see the signal uh, popping up here, is, is, is shown here compared to signal with a signal strength of one, as well as best fit strength, which in this case turns out to be a bit higher, which is about 2.2. This allows uh, Atlas to go ahead and actually uh, claim uh, evidence for four top quark production. And then they have about 4.7 sigma observed and then 2.6 sigma uh, expected. Uh, CMS has a very similar measurement. Uh, this actually has a, a almost identical uh, expected sensitivity. The observed is actually in this case very compatible with the observed at about 2.6 uh, sigma. The uh, another uh, interesting result in this case from uh, this time for CMS is, is, a, is a search for uh, TT gamma. Uh, in this case, you can constrain the, the top gamma coupling, uh, also look for anomalous uh, top quark couplings, and you can interpret the results within the context of the, the standard model uh, EFT. And, and shown here are, are the results. Uh, this is from the E plus jets channel, mu plus jets, and the, uh, the combined L plus jets uh, compared with the, uh, the theoretical uh, uncertainties. All right, 
So going ahead, I just want to quickly summarize what I consider is sort of, you know, looking ahead to run three. I think there is a lot of ground to cover. I mean, we're trying to aim for ultimate precision in these measurements. Uh, we are revising our analysis strategies and techniques, trying to constrain systematics better. We are working on improving calibrations for objects and then use of modern methods such as jet substructure going after new topologies uh, with uh, boosted uh, objects. We are trying to, at the same time, ensure best possible modeling, because that's what we know. We are getting to the point where we are sensitive to some of these corrections. So we are strengthening our links with the theory, pheno, and generator community, working on generator development and implementation, and of course, doing the physics studies that are needed alongside. At the same time, we are working on really work, uh, improving and understanding and coming up with comprehensive recipes for our systematic uncertainties, and then triggering strategies, which are always really important for standard model measurements with the aim of trying to keep the thresholds low and, ex and explore alternate strategies such as parking that I can talk about if there's interest at the end. Now, we discovered the Higgs back in 2012. And then so you could be asking, what have been doing since then? Well, we have not gone and joined any alien civilization, but rather we've been putting in significant effort into characterizing the properties of the Higgs. What we've done is we've gone ahead and firmly established all of the main decay modes and then the different production modes. We've uh, observed the, the tau Higgs, bottom Higgs and top Higgs uh, uh, measure, uh, couplings or rather measured them now. Uh, the mass measurement for the Higgs is at a uh, one per mil precision at the moment. And we've really gone from plots like this, which is the discovery plot uh, from uh, CMS uh, for uh, uh, Higgs to Z to 4L to doing Higgs cross-section measurements at different center of mass energies. At the same time, we're doing fiducial and differential cross-section measurements and comparing them to state-of-the-art uh, calculations. If we look at what the signal strength, so the observed cross-section over the expected uh, from the standard model is, we already see that the experimental precision, which is given here, is at the level of the theoretical precision. So we really come a long way here. That said, there are still a number of open questions. Uh, the first one related to the mass of the Higgs being what it is. We don't really quite understand why. So is the Higgs elementary or composite? Uh, what about the Higgs coupling to charm, to muons? Are there exotic Higgs decays? Is it a Higgs or the Higgs? Are there additional Higgs bosons? What is the true nature of electroweak symmetry breaking? And so with that, I'm going to now talk about some of the, uh, the measurements in, in this area. So the first is uh, going after the, the second generation or the next frontier right now, where we are trying to establish couplings to second generation fermions with Higgs to mu mu. This is interesting. The branching ratio is very small, but it could be enhanced in, in some BSM scenarios. And you see here uh, a plot from or an event display from, from CMS, which uh, shows uh, two muons. And this is uh, produced in the, in the VBF uh, production mode. In the end, uh, after the measurement, what we do is we see evidence for Higgs to mu mu production at CMS, uh, signal strength uh, sh uh, shown here, observed significance of three sigma and expected of 2.5. If we look at the Higgs uh, coupling parameters and uh, as a function of particle mass, you might look at this beautiful plot and say, you know, things, you know, nicely match up. I want then to point out that this is actually a log log plot. So it's important to sort of look here in the, in the lower panel. And when you do so, you'll notice that actually the uncertainties are still quite large and, and very easily it could happen that these shrink and the central value is off from one still. So I think there is still a lot of room for, for trying to really try to see if it is you know, standard model like, not to mention uh, what we have is um, the fact that charm is, is still missing. And so the next important uh, thing for CMS and Atlas to do is utilize advances in, in charm tagging to tackle VHCC. Should point out that Atlas has a very similar looking plot with uh, a similar sensitivity for Higgs to Mu Mu that was also a recent result. 
In addition to this, uh, where we are going after rare Higgs decays. So this is, for example, Higgs to LL gamma, which uh, is produced through these uh, sort of Dalits-like decays, as, as well as a direct sort of Higgs to LL gamma production with an FSR photon that you see there. Now, this is interesting because you can probe exotic couplings, and because it's a three-body decay, potentially with more data, one can also probe the, the CP sector of the Higgs. Now, uh, the analysis in this case looks at MLL less than uh, 30 GeV, and, and, and shown here is a plot which has a, a photon, as you see here, uh, produced in the, uh, with, in, in the BBF production enhanced region. Uh, what you have in this case are actually two electrons, E plus, E minus, but they are quite collinear and in fact merged. And these sort of topologies actually, especially for the electron case, can be quite challenging because the showers are merged, so you need to have special reconstruction techniques and times triggering techniques to try and, and isolate these. And Atlas is able to do that and, and see this nice plot in the MLL gamma um, picture. And, and with that, uh, get a signal strength that is about 1.5 plus minus 0.5, so still uh, statistically uh, dominated, but having evidence for Higgs to LL gamma at about three sigma. The big result that we are all hoping to do one day is a measurement of uh, di-Higgs production, because this directly probes the structure of the Higgs potential. Here, the gluon-gluon fusion mode is what dominates, uh, but you have see these two uh, uh, Feynman diagrams that contribute, and they actually end up having a negative interference between the two diagrams, which leads to a small enough rate, which of course can be enhanced in some BSM models. So here, a lot of progress has been made by looking at Higgs decays in different you know, final states. And, and probably the, the most uh, sort of advantageous such state is uh, di Higgs to BB gamma gamma, where you take advantage of the large branching ratio in the BB case and the excellent mass resolution in the gamma gamma case. Here we have um, plots of the, uh, the, the limits as uh, set as a function of uh, kappa lambda or the Higgs self-coupling modifier, uh, where uh, for Atlas on the left and, and then CMS on the right, where you see the parts that are excluded in kappa lambda with this being the region that is still to be explored. And uh, clearly, of course, more data is, is needed in this case and the sensitivity to standard model Higgs self-coupling will really need the high luminosity LHC data set. At the same time, we're really going after, you know, in, in a way, direct searches for uh, BSM uh, physics, so exotic Higgs bosons, MSM or, or two Higgs doublet models. And of course, we are looking at a whole slew of final states that are being looked at and also uh, combining these direct searches with measurements of the Higgs coupling to really rule out large regions of parameter space. This is a plot which uh, shows these constraints in the tangent beta to MA, where A is the pseudoscalar uh, mass plane. What you can see is though, that there is substantial amount of phase space uh, and mass space that is still left. And then our effort is ongoing right now to improve searches that uh, need to access uh, this uh, difficult region of intermediate tan beta and, and high masses. I will now switch gears to really talking about going after the unknown, uh, both in sort of indirect, but also uh, direct searches, where we are going after new particles or interactions or basically new physics principles. I think a place to start here is actually looking at the, the exotic hadrons, some expected, some unexpected perhaps, that have actually been discovered at the LHC. There have been about 59 new hadrons discovered at LHC over the period of the last 11, 12 years. And then you could really call it the Large Hadron Discovery Factory. This is what LHCB has started calling the LHC. And uh, yeah, about 52 of these have been discovered by LHCB and literally one per almost two months, I think it was the calculation. And you see here, oops, sorry about that. You see here, um, Actually, I should get out of this. You see here the, the four such um, 
particles that were discovered by LHCb just recently, and these are sort of four quark uh, final states where you have uh, uh, charm and, and strange and, and uh, some up quark-like combinations. And an effort is ongoing right now to understand the exact nature, uh, how do you model them, uh, get a better understanding of the strong interaction, and perhaps this can even give information related to, for example, the flavor anomalies that we know about. Another uh, interesting measurement from LHCb is a measurement of uh, B sub S oscillations. These oscillations are very fast. Uh, they're happening at about three trillion times per second. And you see, you know, as they happen through these box diagrams that you see here. What you can have is a measurement of this oscillation combined with a number of measurements, including measurement of uh, B sub D, as well as angle and uh, sides measurements, which really help to overconstrain this unitarity triangle and really give us a better understanding of the CP violation, for example, or the phase uh, in, in the standard model. LHCb does that by uh, looking at uh, B sub S to D sub S pi decays. Uh, shown here are the decays in the, uh, in the unmixed case, which is in, in, in blue, versus the mixed state in, in, in red as a function of the, of the time. And LHCb can measure these oscillations because it has an excellent uh, time resolution. In the end, uh, you see here the result obtained, or the, the new uh, result, which is really a factor of two improvement over the previous result, and then the, uh, the final sort of uh, combined uh, result, which is shown here, which is, 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 is the best uh, to date. Moving on to, I think, what has been really in the news recently, uh, a very, very intriguing uh, uh, area of, of study. And this is uh, the flavor anomaly sector, whereby uh, we've been, uh, in LHCb in particular, looking at the, the ratio of these two decays, uh, which is uh, given by RK, looking at uh, K plus mu plus mu minus over K plus E plus E minus. And analogously, you have um, RK star, where the K plus is replaced by the R, uh, K star. We've had a result previously for LHCb, uh, which you see here in, in black, uh, compared to uh, results from other experiments. And interestingly enough, they deviate from one, which is what you would expect if uh, lepton flavor universality was, was conserved. So there is about a 2.5 sigma tension at this point. Uh, there is another uh, such ratio which is of interest, which is RD star, which you can see here listed ratio of the tau to the muon decays with the, with the D star in the D star final state. Here again, if one looks at the, the results that have come about from the various uh, experiments and, and looking at where we are with the average, which is here compared to what you'd expect uh, from the standard model lepton flavor universality, you see there is about a 2.5 sigma tension again. So we've been very excitedly looking for an updated result from LHCb, which uh, arrived just a few months ago. And this is an update using the full run two data set uh, shown here, the mass plot for the K plus mu, mu plus mu minus final state and K plus uh, E plus E minus using this, uh, using uh, J side decays to calibrate LHCb calculates RK to be about 0.846 which if you then uh, compare to the other measurements and to the previous LHC measurements, you see that it is consistent with lepton flavor violation at about 3.1 sigma. So this was then the first really strong first evidence for lepton flavor violation and something that will be clearly followed up with, with more data. But what it has done is actually uh, renewed a lot of interest in, in direct searches, for example, for leptoquarks, because there are various models which predict that such kind of uh, differences can come about with the presence of a leptoquark, particularly leptoquarks uh, in the coupling to the, the second and third generation. So what uh, Atlas and CMS have are in the high PT sector, a very uh, diverse uh, program of leptoquark searches looking in different final states and just about now, you know, we're getting to the point where we are pushing sensitivity above a TEV, and this is a region which is uh, uh, favored by the B physics anomalies. And not just simple searches, they are more complicated final states, exploring bigger couplings and widths, and of course, in the process, in the current process of uh, analyzing the full uh, run two data set. 
Not just that, uh, there have been efforts recently to actually test uh, lepton universality at uh, the TV scale. And then this is a, a take from uh, the standard sort of Z prime to E plus E minus, uh, Z prime to mu plus mu minus search, the, the high mass searches, where you can now take the E, e and mu mu mass spectra and, and look at this uh, ratio, sort of compare the two mass spectra. If uh, lepton flavor universality is maintained, you expect this ratio to be a uh, unity. So CMS goes ahead and does that and calculates this ratio, which you see here, data over Monte Carlo, over a, a mass range. And then what you see is that there is good agreement with this expectation observed up to about you know, 1.5 TV. Beyond that, uh, there's actually, uh, uncertainties are quite large as you can see here. And then you see a little bit of a deviation here. And this is actually coming from a, a small excess, about four events or so a little bit at, at three TV, uh, I'm sorry, at, at this mass region, which is about uh, 1.8 1, 1 uh, TV uh, in, the, in the CMS data. Atlas is, is doing similar studies, uh, but this time looking for uh, contact interaction between the BNS quarks and, and, T, uh, and, and two leptons. And, and then shown here are the, uh, the, the results, the, uh, the cross-section uh, limit as a function of mass of the mu plus mu minus pair in this case. It's done also for E plus E minus with uh, exclusion uh, limits uh, set. They are still at that point where they are away from the, the values that you said would be favored by the B meson decay uh, anomalies. But this is again, an alternate or complementary way of exploring which uh, the other experiments are pursuing with great interest. Uh, similarly, uh, looking at the, the lepton flavor violating decays of the Z boson, uh, you have the signal here where the Z decays to a tau and a lepton and the tau can decay uh, leptonically. So you'd have two opposite sign, different flavor leptons and two neutrinos, you know, that are sort of collinear. And you'd sort of try to separate or, or distinguish this from the background, which is uh, Z to tau tau with the tau decaying leptonically. But you can just not, uh, you can, in addition to the leptonic decay of the tau, look at the hadronic uh, decays. And Atlas has actually looked at both. And then you see here the, uh, the combined uh, result uh, also using uh, run one data. And, and then the observed upper limits, which are shown here, which uh, we then compare to the previous limits in this case from uh, LEP, and they're actually already a factor of two better. CMS is also looking for this in uh, the decays of the Higgs, uh, for example, searching for Higgs to E tau and Higgs to mu tau. And, and you see here constraints uh, set on the, the Yukawa couplings. This is where the, uh, the results are, the observed results. And already they are quite uh, improved over say results coming from the tau to mu gamma or tau to three mu uh, area. So that's how the flavor anomalies are being explored. And I want to spend the last minutes uh, talking about sort of the, the rich and diverse you know, direct search uh, landscape where we have big uh, inclusive searches which are complemented by dedicated searches that target gaps in coverage where we have a lot of uh, modern methods being used for Higgs, B, Charm, Top uh, tagging. We have uh, improved uh, lepton reconstruction and ID trying to go after low PT leptons. We are improving analysis techniques. We are going after uh, challenging topologies. Uh, for example, in this case, the stop, which uh, decays to a neutralino and a top quark. And then the mass difference between the stop and the neutralino is about uh, the top mass. So you have a final state, which is, you know, has a, has a similar nature as the DT bar standard model background. And this is a so-called top corridor, which until recently was, for example, not explored much at, at CMS or rather difficult to get to. But now with uh, sort of more advanced analysis methods, we are able to actually uh, set constraints in that uh, top corridor, which you see put here as a function of the mass of the neutralino and the mass of the stop. Uh, we're looking at longer decay chains, for example, considering uh, taus in, in stop decay chains and traditional searches veto taus or don't focus on them. So now we're starting to explore this. And in general, I would say a lot of ground was covered in run two and I'll just show a couple of results, but a whole lot more luminosity awaits us in, in run three to, of course, uh, also further explore this. A big focus has been really going after what I would call unconventional analysis. And, and this is one such which uh, targets uh, electrophic uh, production 
of, of, of long-lived uh, trigenos and neutralinos, as well as strong production of gluinos that decay promptly to long-lived uh, trigenos. So it is an interesting uh, final state because what you could have is a trigeno which has hits in the inner pixel uh, detector and then it decays into a low momentum pion and uh, a neutralino and, and essentially you don't reconstruct this. So this looks like a disappearing track and it has no deposition in the calorimeter and nothing in the muon. And so one can try and take advantage of these features to do searches of this nature. And, and shown here are then the, the constraints, uh, mass of the charge you know, as a function of the, uh, its, uh, its lifetime. And then you can see the improvements that Atlas is able to do in terms of uh, the region that is explored in comparison to previous uh, searches. Two minutes, Alika. Okay, thanks. Uh, the dark matter continues to be a thriving field of research. Uh, of course, there are the popular mono X searches which have been performed, which explore a large part of the parameter space. And, and what you see here is that, you know, there's no low hanging fruit, but a significant progress has been made in a variety of, of final states. And a lot of interest in particular has gone into now uh, looking at the Higgs in, in, in these dark matter studies. So for example, uh, uh, one of the sensitive uh, decays is Higgs to BB bar, a mono Higgs, where the Higgs uh, goes to BB bar and you could be perhaps even having a boosted uh, Higgs in that case or uh, looking for uh, Higgs uh, to uh, invisible decays and then using that to uh, constrain uh, dark matter. And, and here what we see is that the LHC searches are really complementary to direct searches in particular for certain cases, depending on the assumptions, uh, improving sensitivity at, at low uh, dark matter masses. There is a lot of uh, use of jet substructure techniques uh, going into uh, using the Higgs for Higgs tagging, uh, trying to improve, for example, top tagging. And this is a nice plot from Atlas, which shows you know, the cross section limits for Z prime to TT bar. This is the old 36 inverse fem to bond result. Then uh, if you just improve the analysis methods in the same data set, you get to the blue line, and then you add the larger full run to data set, and you can see the very nice improvement. So a lot of work is going into making this happen, as well as looking at new final states. For example, a kaluza klein gauge boson, which decays into a W and a radion, and a radion then decays to two Ws. So you have three Ws in the final states, and you can have different combinations of resolved or merged topologies, and then you can set uh, constraints in, in, the, in the mass of the, the radion and the, the gauge boson. At the same time, it's important to cover the full mass range, because if we look at the, the low mass region, here we know that the cross sections are very large and uh, our triggering thresholds are increasing. So we need to figure out strategies for looking in, in this region as well. And, and so CMS and Atlas have what's called scouting and trigger level analyses that try to do so. And then they add uh, jet uh, substructure, looking at ISR photons, and this really has a big impact looking here at the constraints on the coupling as a function of mass of the Z prime. And you can see that, for example, using the ISR photon tag at the trigger level gets constraints down to 10 GeV. And then using jet substructure at the trigger at the HLT again can get good constraints up down here. Finally, my last sort of analysis slide, here is the, the long-lived particles uh, searches. These are really a very, very diverse uh, set of searches, uh, very popular right now. And as you can see, uh, they are looking at a number of different topologies. I showed you the disappearing track one already. And these searches often have to overcome challenges in trigger reconstruction and background estimation. They need to understand the detector better, take advantage of uh, the, uh, all of this to do and, and measure and try to go after these searches. And of course, we have the HLLC upgrades that you will hear about uh, in just a bit, which will have improved sensitivity. So then to conclude, hopefully I've shown you and convinced you that the last sort of you know, 11, 12 years of LHC operation has really been an amazing ride. We've gone from discovering the Higgs to using it as a tool for discovery. 
We've uh, ruled out you know, huge amounts of parameter space and at the same time developed innovative strategies for triggering data taking, going after unexplored territory. And of course, what is very exciting is that there are these tantalizing hints of new physics in the flavor sector that will be looked at with more data. I consider this to be a really exciting time to be part of the LHC experiments to develop and implement new ideas and, and really go in directions where no one has gone before. And then keep in mind again that about you know 95% of the total LHC data is still to come and, and be studied. And I firmly believe that there is new physics lying in wait with for us uh, in our future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tulika, for this wonderful, inspiring talk. These are really impressive results. Um, we have a minute or so for questions. Please feel free to type your questions in the Q&A. I don't see any right now. Um, oh, there is a question. Okay, uh, so Tulika, James Klein asked that on page 16, is the access in the Higgs cross section at low square root of S statistically insignificant? It's on page 16. an axis in the Higgs yes. cross section at low square root of s. So this is the, the seven TV measurements that you're looking at. Uh, these are really uh, with large uncertainties at that point. And then as you see, as we've been collecting uh, large data sets, uh, the uncertainties are getting better. Uh, so that's what I would say at this point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tulika. So, okay, just, just a quick question by Karishma before we go on. How do you know what quarks make up the exotic headphones? So this is a quite complicated, you know, in terms of looking at what the final state being reconstructed is. And, and these are looked at in, in various decays, uh, including, for example, D sub S, et cetera. So then depending on what uh, the actual um, Final state is by doing uh, various uh, Dulitz uh, plot analyses, uh, they can try and, and get a better idea of, of, uh, of what uh, quarks potentially make them up. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So thank you. I think these are all questions for now. Thank you so much for this wonderful talk. Thank you.